part that we're going to put fusible on is our letter A, our white fabric. And it is a half a yard. And putting fusible web and dealing with the sticky of it on a big piece of fabric is sometimes a pain. But I want you to see that I'm using Steam Seam 2. I'm not using the light. The easiest way I've found to deal with a big laying fusible on a big piece of fabric is to cut a bunch of smaller sheets. I have now two sheets that I can add here on the back of my fabric. So the, basically the first thing you want to do is you want to iron all your wrinkles out. Then cut your pieces. On this I'm going to need, I have the width of my fusible web is 12 inches wide and I'm cutting them about 18 inches long for this fabric. So you have to remove the release paper on the back. The front of the fusible web has this little yellow grid. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to peel off the back of the fusible web, which is a solid, no markings. And you'll see a little residue stays on it. So I fold it on top of itself with the sticky sides touching, and then I disregard this piece of paper. I kind of want to get rid of him because he'll get sticky on everything in your studio. So now I already have one piece up here. When I go to add the second piece here or a third piece, I kind of fold it in half now with the matte side, the non-sticky side of the fusible web touching each other. And then I don't have so much fusible web to deal with. And I'm just going to take and I'm going to lay this butt it right up together. Don't overlap, just butt it. And then I gently start to lay it down and then smooth it here with my hand all the way down. Okay? And working on a hard surface like this table is really good. Now, did I get a, a line in there? No, I did not. It's just a line in the paper. But as you can see right here, the fusible web is hanging over the edge right in here. So I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut that off before I go to the iron. Okay? There, we want to get rid of that. Let's see, do I have any overhang? I do, I have a little overhanging over here. If you go to the iron with any of that fusible web exposed, it will turn to black tar on the back of your iron. And then all, every time you go to iron your white fabric, you'll have a black streak. So here I've got my fabric already, and then I'm gonna take it to the ironing board. I'm gonna simulate this so I don't have to move anything. And I'm just going to simulate, I press it from the fusible side first. And if your iron is hot, you're just going to go like this. It's no big deal. You don't have to hold it on for a really long time. Now, one of the things we do, and I'll repeat this a bunch of times, is we always put our pattern pieces on the right side of the fabric, not the fusible web with the little yellow lines. That's the way they used to do it. This is the way I do it. All the pattern pieces are going the right way, so you need to pin them onto the right side of the fabric. So here, I've laid out the pattern on this half a yard of white fabric. I have all the pieces that have an A on them and have an A and the little green happy face. They're all laid on this half a yard of fabric. I have them all on here. And now I'm going to take some straight pins and I'm going to pin them. Now remember, they're on the right side okay, of the fabric, not the fusible web paper underneath here. Okay, That's really important to make sure. So now I'm going to go through, I'm going to pin them all on, and then I'm going to cut them out somewhere close to the outside of that line. Now we're going to do the same for our G fabric and our M fabric because they have the blue stars on them, right? So this is all the G fabrics. I'm going to fuse the whole fabric, all of G, and then I'm going to put these down, but I'm only going to cut these two out right now. And then for the M, same thing, I'm going to fuse the whole M fabric, but I'm just going to cut out and use these right now. I'm just going to keep these pinned on. Uh, their fabric for later. 
Okay, this was my M fabric, so I'm going to take my M pieces. These are the pieces I've cut out. They're all M's. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them on this fabric. Now sometimes you might have to cut away some of this white paper because it's giving us an illusion that it doesn't fit, but it does fit. Okay, so now you can see that that fits. But I think what I'm going to do just for fun, I'm going to cut these guys out here, put those there. I'm going to put these here, and now my fabric fits perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pin in these to hold them onto this fabric for later. I'll cut those out later, but I'm going to cut this out, and I just put one or two pins on either edge. You don't have to put in a lot of pins. And you don't really have to follow the lines when you're cutting out. And then I'm going to cut out one of these pieces. I'm going to show you how I cut. Okay, I'm going to cut right along. Let's in fact hold it up and see if you can see if you can get in here a little bit better, okay? I'm going to show you how I cut up close. I'm going to cut right along this black line. I slide the paper all the way up into the far back of my scissors and then I press and I wiggle it around the line. You don't have to have a perfect, perfect cut because once I take this pattern off, nobody is going to know I didn't perfectly cut this out. Let's see right over here. This is better right here. See how I'm wiggling it? And I'm getting pretty close to the line, but not really. It won't matter. Okay, this is an art quilt. You don't have to follow the lines exactly. So now, I'm going to show you the perfect cut. Eh, Here's the perfect cut. See, I didn't quite get there. I might have snipped it a little bit too much here. None of that matters. When I take the pattern piece off, nobody's going to know I didn't follow that line exactly. Now this is a fun part. We're going to put the lining <clears throat> on the back of our big base petals here. And so I have assembled all the A's, the big ones with the star, and I have the four lining pieces that have the happy face on them. Okay, so those are all right here. And then I'm gonna go through any of these big pattern pieces that have that dotted line. That dotted line here indicates where this piece of lining is gonna go. Now there's a trick on how to get this on perfectly and that's why I love being able to show you this on a video because I can't show you this unless you're taking a class from me. And here you are taking a class from me. So I have a lot of tips and tricks for putting things in the right place and getting registration almost perfect. So I'm gonna show you how to do the lining right now. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to find this lining piece goes here, and I know this lining piece goes here. So I'm going to remove the pattern pieces and stick them to the side here. Stick them to the side. Then I'm going to take this pattern and unpin it. Okay, because we want that. That's going to help us. And then I'm going to remove the fabric from the release paper. I'm going to gently peel this up and I'm going to lay it out here with a sticky side up. Okay, I'm going to take my pattern piece that I have that shows me where these pieces go and I'm going to put it under the release paper. This release paper is non-stick. So I'm putting it on the release paper and now I see the lines perfectly. These dotted lines go perfectly right here. So I'm going to 
take the release paper off this and I'm gonna stick it on the paper here. Okay, you could use, if you wanted, a wonder clip to hold that in place. I love wonder clips. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna take the other piece and I'm removing the release paper on the back here. Whoops, there you go. And I'm gonna lay it sticky side down, fabric facing up. Now I take my, my big main petals, this is the sticky side, I'm gonna turn it over, okay? And I'm gonna lay it in place on the pattern piece with a sticky down Let's take this wonder clip out. Sticky is down and on top of my fabrics, okay? Now I've put my lining in. And when we get rid of all this paper, there's my lining pieces right there. I'm going to show you. Can you see how it is, how this shadow is lighter in here? We want that. That is going to add. That's going to be our bright white. And this is gonna be our kind of grayed out white on our flower, and it's on the reverse side. So for, before we build our flower, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna stick it right back on that release paper, and I'm gonna press it on. You may need to put a couple wonder clips or a pin on it so it won't um, fall off. I'm gonna put the pattern back on it too, and use some clips to hold it in place so I know where it will go, and then, we can do the other two pieces the same way. If you get confused at any time, you know, you can always uh, rewind and go back and watch things over and over. But let's do our lining and then we'll get ready to lay our pieces on our layout guide and start building our flower. Yay. Okay, now's the time you've been waiting for. We're gonna put this bad boy together. And usually when you're putting a quilt together in applique, fusible applique, you start out with the background fabric. You know, you're gonna start building your flower and putting them on the background fabric. Well, I found out years ago that that wasn't always working for me, even though I planned out all the colors Spent hours doing that. As soon as the flower really started to develop, the background fabric that I've chosen wasn't the right background. So, 
what I started doing is building my flower, not starting with the background fabric, but building my flower on parchment paper. And once I'm building it on parchment paper, I can get the flower and all the colors and the highlights going together like I like it. And then I can audition different background fabrics. And these are some of the auditions I'm going to use. And then I think I'm going to even try something. What about if it was on a blue sky? What would that look like? And what if it was on a green, just them with a green background? And the right color green dictates what color your leaves are. My leaves are a little darker green. This may work. But at the end of putting our flower to all together, we'll audition these backgrounds. And I'll show you how to find the perfect background for your flower quilt. Now, that's how I win awards, finding the right combination of of fabrics. A lot of times when I'm judging, I will see some beautiful handwork and machine work. They just didn't spend time with the right colors. So I want to give you a little bit of how I do that and maybe this will help you. So I'm going to get rid of all the background fabrics till later. And the first thing we need to do is start out with our parchment paper and our layout guide. Okay, here's my layout guide in our pattern. And it is our map. It's going to tell us where everything goes. But what we need to do is lay something that is non-stick, meaning things can't stick to it. We can iron on it, get all our pieces ironed on it, but we can still peel off our flower. And the best way I have found to do that is with parchment paper. I've tried all kinds of non-stick surfaces out there. Some you can't see through, some are brown. I do like the Misty Fuse um, Fat Goddess sheets. Those are nice, but they are a brown color. And when you're dealing with color and working, and that's what we're doing, because we're painting a painting and we're dealing with color. Okay, we. I like to have it on white because I can see what the colors truly look like. So these are my non-stick layout guide sheets. They are a silicone parchment paper that's really sheer. You can go to aisle seven at the Piggly Wiggly and get a roll of white parchment paper. It'll work just the same. But these are a little bit bigger and they're reusable. So I'm gonna lay some of these out here and see what size do I need for this flower. This is a big flower. So I think we're gonna use about three sheets on this stick. Let's see if it would go better this way. Maybe this and this. Oh yeah, that's better. And maybe one of these. Okay, so we have to attach these. So what I do is I take two sheets together, right here. And what I used to do in a classroom situation, all I had to put them together were straight pins. Um, you cannot use tape. This is non-stick, so tape will not stick to this. So we're gonna pin these, and I would just take a nice long pin, and I would, right in here, just go about a fourth of an inch, like you're doing a quilt seam. I just go in and out a couple times, all the way along here, maybe with four pins. But then, one day in class, I said, boy, if I only had a stapler, and this was when I was teaching at the International Quilt Festival, and a lady in class happened to have a stapler handy in her purse. Well, we all discovered that using the stapler was really easy because now we can do a little, little quarter inch seam all the way down. And if you're lucky enough to have a stapler in your purse too, go ahead and staple it. Okay, I've stapled it. Now what I do is I'm gonna take the top sheet and I fold it over those staples, okay? Now, I have a really big piece of parchment paper, and look, it fits. This whole side fits right here. Okay, now, on this side, I need the parchment paper to be right about here. Now, I just want it to cover the flower, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna staple these two together just right like this. So I don't cover the top of that. And I'm gonna staple this. I stole this from my husband's office. 
So if he's looking for it, it's in here. Okay. There we go. And now I'm going to lay, flip this over the staples also. Fold it there, nice and neat. There we go. Okay, this is looking good. Now, so I don't have all this excess, I'm just gonna take some scissors. And over here, where it's hanging over the edge, if you can see that, I'm just gonna trim it, you know, so it fits a little bit better. And we're re now we're ready to go. Now, if you wanna iron the wrinkles out on this, you can, but can you see how nice it is to see through, that you can really see everything so what I do is I'm going to take my straight pins and I'm going to pin these at the top just at the top so that this will not move you do not want this moving while you're assembling your flower because if it starts wiggling around you're going to have a wonky flower and you won't get a good registration so we always try and pin it at least at the top sometimes I want to peek underneath and lift this up to see, to read something more clearly because I am a little blind and that's going to help me do that. So now, now we're ready to start building our flowers. So we want to get all of our big base petals together here. Okay, these are the ones. Remember this? They had the stars on them. All the white fabric that had the stars. There was a G, and I think there was some M also. And so, I've got them all here. And you remember we have our code here. Okay, I've put a code on this uh, blog that you can hopefully download or copy and paste. And it kind of tells you that this is petal number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. So you can look at that a little bit easier. Um, it just gives you a bearing because the more help we have, the better it is. Okay, so we will get that going. So the first thing, remember we lined, we lined our A11s and A a 10 remember we put our our lining let's see if you can see it here we put the lining fabric here on the back remember that so it's all ready to go move this over so i know is this better i know that a 10 is right here and i a let uh, and petal 11 is right here. So I know that this, these petals go laid down right in here. So I'm going to take off the back parchment paper. You can throw that away. And I'm going to take, line them up on that dark, on that dark edge. Now sometimes they line up perfect. And it all has to do with how you cut. Do you cut on the line, around the line, inside the line? I don't really care. Just put it somewhere close to those lines and you will have a beautiful flower. This is not, um, there's no quilting police in my class. Now you can save the pattern pieces because you know everybody's going to want this for Christmas. And okay, I'm only making it once. I understand. Okay, so now I'm going to go grab another petal. And I'm going in any order. This one is called a, a two and a two. I'm gonna look over here, let's see. It says A2 right there, and I'm gonna lay A2 right in there. So again, I'm gonna peel off the release paper. Peel off the release paper and lay it in place. Ooh. Okay, so now we've got, what's this one? This one is number one. We'll do the same thing. Here's number one. You don't have to go in order one, two, three, um, because you know we're not doing a math a math problem here. You can lay them in any order you want. Now, sometimes you'll notice on the picture, like right in here, 
do you see where I have which which petal goes on top? Well, sometimes that you are going to have to look at the picture underneath. Now, does petal two go on top, or does petal two go underneath? I think petal one goes underneath petal two. So I'm making an executive decision there. Put that there, and then put this one on top. And that looks good to me. Okay, here's number nine, petal number nine. And nine had a piece of lining. That dotted line is where we put our lining in. I did not press it, they're just sticking to each other. Okay, don't be quick to press things yet. These are all just sticking to each other. So that was number nine. So now where is number nine? And you can use your little guide again. And I'm, this is seven, this is eight, 10. I'm thinking this is nine right here. Okay, so let me see what you see. That is petal eight right here. So, and this one says petal nine right there. So we're gonna lay it right in here like this. And then again, I'm gonna look and see, looks like tens underneath and nine is on top. Look at somewhere in there. And just press them together and they're sticking to each other you know sometimes depending on what the weather's like they may not stick real well to the parchment paper but they will stick to each other and if you don't you know wave this around the room you don't have to worry about that here's the number 12 and 12 also had the lining piece so I'm gonna put 12 over here So far, pretty simple, huh? Let's put petal number seven. Go in kind of like that. Now you can get all your pins back. Petal number seven will go in there. It's a G color. This is our shadow. This flower is underneath this top flower. So it's shaded. This is M, petal number five, six. There's five right there. Five, and it has this cutout. So let's see, let's lay it down. Go in like that. And part of it goes up here, and there's a leaf right here. If you, there's a leaf, and so it kind of goes cut out like that. Where the petals go is a darker, bold line. The little pieces that we'll add later have a thinner line. So I'm going to lay it in there and get, I'm, I'm looking at this curvy line right here, and that's what I'm matching up, and this line, these lines down here, okay? And don't worry that they go over the center in here because we want them to do that. So they'll stick together. Flower number two, but it's a G6. So this is number six. Six is gonna go right in like that. Right in like that. There you go. I'm looking at this dark line right here. Panel number six. And you'll peel off the release paper. right in here get it there you go get that okay now we've got um, this one is M8 M M M8 there's eight petal number eight okay this is kind of a weird wonky one so and the key is we want this color to go under here and we want this color to sunk, to go up into that little area right in there. So, get rid of that. So it's gonna go like that and like that. I take the release paper off and I'm gonna put it in those areas. Now, 
we need to here lift up this to go over this now you a lot of times you'll just gonna lift this up with your fingers and put this one back down that's all you have to do and there we go without moving the other registration but here we've got that okay let's see what other petals do we have here's number four four is a little one and four goes petal four goes right in here which means it also goes on top of this because if you look under here you can see that's where four goes but it'll go on top like that Let's take this off and we peel off the release paper and we lay it Lay it in those dark lines. That's looking pretty good. And then our last petal is number three. Last petal with a star on it. Okay, and it's going to go in here. In fact, I may lift this up. Lift that up. Because I know that number petal number four goes on top of this number three. So let's get him over here. Lay them down right there. Make sure you're getting a good shot of my fuzzy hair. Okay, there we go. We have all the base petals down on our flower. So let's look at this. So we've got our flower number. Now this one's gonna be called, I think, flower number one. I think this is flower number two and this is flower number three. And somewhere on here it should say that. Okay, now we've got to add our next layer. And so take a break. I'll be right back and we'll do the next layer. This is the time where we're going to think about our background fabric because we need to move this off of here so that we can see where all these little details go. So we need to move this base flower. So this is the trick that I do. If you know something better, go ahead, try it. But this is what's been working for me. First thing we need is we need our little V colors and they are the center of your flower. And I just went through and found out that this is number one flower. This is number two flower. This is number three flower. Okay, that's how it goes. So what I wanna do first Take your, take your centers off, is I have filled my iron with steam. And we are gonna just hand press uh, these items down. We're not gonna let the iron touch our fabric. We're going to shoot some steam here, okay? I'm shooting steam. And then I'm gonna press it with my hand. See how we do that? And what it's doing is they're sticking to each other. I'm gonna press it again and then press Right here, so those layers, and this layer, I'm going to press. Okay. That's a lot of steam. Steaming up my glasses. Now, the reason why I'm not ironing this is because later, we're going to have to get this up and slide pieces underneath there. If I lay my iron on it right now, it's going to melt it, and it's going to be hard and difficult to lift that up. And we've got some other pieces that need to go under. And I'm going to do the same over here. We're steaming it with the iron. And then I'm going to press it with my hand. Okay. So now they're kind of sticking to each other. Now I want to lay my pieces, my center pieces down. This is three, two, one. Now how do we get them on there when we've covered them up? Well, here's what I do so that you can see. I'm so grateful for this big table. Okay, so now you can kind of see. This is the V part in here, this, this line. Okay, and do you see where this one bump is right there? That one bump fits just like that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lay that down. And then we keep the other three all laying down. I'm gonna peel the release paper off my V fabric going to line that little bump back up, turn it around, okay, and I'm going to lay it like that, and then all I have to do is just lift up that, and it's in the perfect registration. Did you see that? And I'm going to give it a squirt. I'm not touching it, I'm just steaming it. 
Okay, and then I'm going to press it with my hand. Let's go over. Let's do flower number three. Okay, so we got to do the same thing. So which one will we lift up? Let's lift up this guy. Yeah. Do you see where it indents right in there? That goes in like this. So it'll lay like that. So I'm going to peel the release paper off. If you can't get the release paper off, here's the trick I do. I rip my fabric, okay? The fabric doesn't rip, but the paper does on the back, and then you can get your finger in and peel that right off. So the registration mark that I'm looking for is that little V, and I'm gonna put this on here like that, and then tuck that under, and now we have perfect registration, and I'm gonna shoot it. Okay, I'm not pressing it, I'm just shooting it with steam, which warms up the fusible web and allows it to stick, okay? We're gonna come over here, there we go. Flower number one, I'll just peel up number A. This A, well see, it's sticking pretty good over here. So find something that comes up. Okay, and so I'm gonna take this off. And that little wedge goes right there. So I'm gonna put that back down. Take this, peel off the release paper. Now, I'm noticing on this piece that the fusible web did not stick onto the fabric. So I'm gonna just fold it back over and press it on again. And hopefully now it has stuck. Yes, it has. And I've attached another piece of white fabric there, but I don't think it's gonna work, really matter. And now we gotta find out where did it go? Oh, that's looking good, right there. Lay those down, lay that down, and then flip this guy up. Sometimes when it gets sticky, you might wanna use your stiletto. Okay, so now we have these flowers and we put the center in to hold them together while we transfer these over to our background fabric. And here's what, how I do it. Okay, so hold your breath. Then I'm gonna take this whole thing and I'm gonna flip it upside down. I know, did you hold your breath? Now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna remove my pins that were holding my release paper and I'm taking all the pins out. Now I'm going to take my layout guide off. And I'm going to gently, now I, I like to line it up. Since I have a gridded table, I'm going to line it up and I'm going to peel gently my release paper off my flower, okay? Now, it does like to stick to your fingernails, so this is where some pins, a stiletto, work really good. Try not to wreck the registration, and sometimes I go halfway. Okay, it's up. Let's go over to this side. And there you go, now we got it. That guy wants to stay there. And voila, you gotta get un unstick your little fingers there. Okay, it's in perfect registration. Now, we're gonna audition some fabric. And here's how I do it. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing this, but here's the fabric that I wanna audition. Okay, it's kinda got these blue, Kind of blue lines in it. I thought that could be kind of cool. So let's see what it looks like on here. So I'm going to open it up to make my, it's always better to have your fabric bigger. Press the flower onto the fabric. We can straighten out all that later. And then I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to flip it with the flower on it up and over. Look at that, ooh, I like that color. I think that would be really pretty. That's a neat grid that it's on. Can you see that? 
Okay, let's try another one. Same process, but now I'm going to peel off the fabric. I go from a corner to the corner seems to be the easiest. The more you do it, little fuzz gets on your flower, so it makes it easier and safer. But hold it down with your hands. If it's starting to feel like it's going to give you a fight, go to the other corner. Okay? Oh, there, that's, that's even easier. We usually do this in my classes so that you can see how the color changes. Changes what you thought. You thought when you come to class, I really want my zinnia on this flower. But when we do this test, you realize, ah, oh, that's not it. This is an interesting brown that I um, picked up. The original one had kind of a striated brown, um, but I've been having fun collecting fabric. I don't know, most of you don't know, I lost my house in a fire in paradise. I gosh. So I've had to rebuild my stash. Spread it out. Let's turn this over and see what it looks like here. Ooh, that's pretty too. I like that one too. Oh my goodness. Let's see if we can go out a little bit. That one's pretty too. This is going to be really, really hard. Let's try that. This beautiful blue look like. Let's put it on and see. Whoops. 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 You don't want the cat to be jumping on the table here. Funny thing is I don't have a cat. They always say that. Okay. I'm not being neat on rolling it out because I could, ooh, that could be really pretty too. Oh my gosh, we're going to have a hard time, aren't we? This could be tough. But this is really fun because it can go with a million colors. I don't know. I'm going to have to play around with this for a while and decide. So you do the same with your flower and send me pictures at Melinda Beulah Designs at Comcast.net. That's my uh, email. I'd love to see what you decided. Okay, get to work. Talk.